Yeah. I'm a former soldier, and he closed you in that war in Iraq. I'll just quote you today in the Daily Mail. Tony Blair is to blame for the publication of the Sir John Chilcott report that Iraq war was being delayed. Can you respond, please? No, I have not uh, blamed Tony Blair for... Um for the timetable of the publication of Chilcot, much though that's been reported this morning. Uh, all I've said is that the process by which Chilcot has to publish the report involves a lot of toing and froing between the drafters of the report and those who will, you know, who, those whose actions and words are being covered in the report. All I'm saying is I, I want everybody, and I'm delighted to hear this morning that Tony Blair himself, his office, have confirmed he wants this to move forward as quickly as possible. I just think we want that to happen as quickly as possible. But, look, it's not. I really think it's slightly pointless um, trying to peer over the shoulder of Sir John Chilcott and his, his, uh, his team um, as they you know, put the finishing touches to the report. I assume, and in fact I know they're doing it as quickly as they can, I'm just as impatient as I guess you are, Sean, to hear this, to see this report out in the open as quickly as possible. Why, it, as a former soldier in Iraq, Sean, why is it so important to you? What, what pained me more than anything, Nick, was seeing the parents of the soldiers lost mm. and then seeing the Butler inquiry stating the intelligence was not substantive, mm. authoritative in detail, but limited, sporadic and patchy. Mm. We were clearly lied to and Chilcott might have hit the nerve here. And what we want is a full and open judicial inquiry with Tony Blair, Campbell, under oath, then repeating the questions asked to them. Nothing else will do. Yeah. Well, look, Sean, uh, look, I, I happen to share your, your very strong view, though I obviously don't, haven't experienced it firsthand as, as, as you have, so it'll be so much more vivid for you, but I happen to think that it was a disastrous foreign policy decision, I think one of the worst since, since Suez, and I think it was taken on a wholly false prospectus, and I've always been of the view, my personal view, is that its legality is, uh, is seriously... Dubious, so it is no surprise to you, Sean, that I think we shouldn't have gone to war in Iraq, and it should be no surprise to you that Tony Blair, you know, fervently believes that we should. I think all sides. Of, I don't. Think, I don't think. I don't think anyone's views about that decision are going to be changed. But what I totally accept is that we need to understand how this decision was taken, on what basis, on the basis of what kind of information, so that we not only learn the lessons of the past but we also learn about the future because there will be there will be occasions in the future where where we're being you know we're being challenged to decide whether we're going to take military action or not got any idea when deputy prime minister it's reported well two things reported in the times today you and tony blair are in quotes a furious spat no just not true no it's not i i, I honestly you, you'll search in vain for any any wording for me sort of pointing the finger at any individual okay. all i'm pointing out is the obvious which is that as uh, as the Chilcot inquiry comes to its latter stages, there's a lot of sort of toing and froing b about about what is and what is not included in the final report. They're saying the eve of next year's general election. Is that a possibility? Uh, it, do you know what? I'm not writing the report. It is an independent report. It is not okay. in the gift of government. It's uh, all I know is, and I and I don't mind doing this publicly, is to say I just hope it's published as quickly as possible because we've been waiting for some time.